Hi, so these things, acorns, they're actually astounding and of course much loved by squirrels, pigs and those seeking an alternative lifestyle and there's a very good reason actually. Acorns contain something like 43% starch, 23% fat, 6 to 7% proteins, a whole host of vitamins, vitamin A, B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, 7 and 9, and of course vitamin C, and then a ton of minerals, uh, copper, zinc, calcium. They are in fact classed as a superfood, so they're really super interesting and for centuries of course people were eating these things the uh, american native indians have a huge tradition of this but that tradition is worldwide there's a jelly at the moment made out of acorns sold in korea which is called the tori muk and that's used all of the time in england the word acorn actually comes from the gothic meaning fruit of the unenclosed land or roughly speaking because this stuff was used as an emergency food and a staple food the world over. There is, however, one slight drawback with it. It's got about 3 to 4% tannin in there. Tannin is that stuff that they use to tan leather, so if you eat it, it clearly tans your insides too. Um, it's not exactly poisonous unless you eat large chunks of it and farmers known to feed their cows exclusively on this have basically killed their herds, so lots of it isn't very good for you. The taste is absolutely foul and the procedure for removing it is long-winded, drawn out and tedious beyond belief. So the standard method really includes drying it, chopping it up and leaching it with either hot or cold leaching. Cold leaching, you soak it in water for ages, drain it, soak it, drain it, soak it. Do that about two million times and you'll have very nice egg -ons. Of course, I joke, it's turned out 20, 25 times or something like that, with various systems recommended. Hot leaching means boiling it sort of somewhere between 3 to 10 times, although I've heard that 15 times works better to get all the tannins out. And of course, that's very energy intensive. And the final method is to do a leaching process for a bit and then chuck some lye in there, yeah, some caustic soda, stir it up and that'll break down the rest of the tannins. So those are the standard methods, and as I said, they take ages. Historically, what they used to do, or according to the various memes I've read, is um, dig a little pit, fill it full of sand and grass, chuck these on top, wonder by every now and then, and pee on it. I'm not quite sure if that's right or not, but it's certainly pour water on it. So that is one of the reasons, and possibly, the bulk reason that we don't use these things because there are millions of tons of this stuff produced every year the world over and basically removed as a nuisance and i believed that was pretty much the state of play until i read this paper what they're saying here is that basically if you chop them up and stir them in a 40 percent ethanol water mixture of three hours at 60 degrees centigrade you get rid of all the tannin so of course we're going to try that. So, I've heard all kinds of horror stories about getting acorns out of the shells. People dry them and smash them with a hammer and uh, have to pick up bits and they say it's an absolute nightmare. But to be honest, I'm finding it just stupidly easy and kind of relaxing. Got myself a trimming knife, got myself an acorn, I split the acorn down the centre and then I can dig the trimming knife under the skin and just peel the nut out. Chuck it in that. And it's actually pretty easy. I mean, not as easy as buying a bag of nuts pre-shelled from the supermarket, that's for sure. But certainly not the horror stories have been told. Anyway, let's get these out. <laughs> there we are shelled, and I've got myself a food processor. Oh, <laughs> a blender. We're going to grind these up. Now, granted, this might seem a lot of trouble if your only relationship with food is opening your wallet when you go to Asda. You tried growing some wheat, grinding it, winnowing it, threshing it and baking it into bread, then I'm willing to bet this wouldn't seem like so much trouble. Anyway, let's grind. So this is the secret recipe contained in that paper, because that paper is actually behind a paywall. So here's my ground acorns right here, and I've actually set them to dry, although I've done everything wet. And I've included the wet acorn in here, probably better if you dry it first. So I've just laid out to dry and we'll see it a later thing. In here, I've got a 40% by volume ethanol water mix. So it's 300 millilitres of deionized water and 200 millilitres of ethanol. Now for the ethanol, I'm using this stuff, which is methylated spirits. 
In 2013, the EU regularised methylated spirit in here. 90%, 96% ethanol, 3% isopropanol alcohol, and 3% methyl ethyl ketone. And then to every 10,000 litres, they add one gram of methyl violet, which is why it's that colour. But that is basically an awful lot of ethanol. Now, there are other places you can get your ethanol, but that one's really easy to get hold of. You can get it pure if you buy it as a bioethanol fuel for home stoves. I'm using this. Put that together in here, and the ratio is 1 to 20 grams to millilitres for your acorns to your fluids. So in here, the 25 grams of my powdered acorn, remember it's wet, so there'd be more acorn if it was dry, and then 500 millilitres of my fluid. It's set at 60 degrees centigrade, and it's going to be stirring for three hours. Now, three hours in terms of acorn leaching, it's not a huge amount. The paper says that it can re it can remove the tannins at at least 80%. Now remember, different acorns have different tannin contents in them, and once this is dissolved in the tannin, there's not a lot you can do about it. So it can remove at least 80%, maybe more depending on your acorn. And I'm using a, an English acorn, I'm not using red oak acorn. The tannin will go into solution, and we'll have the cleaned acorns with the tannin, and we can reclaim the tannin. Anyway, we'll come back to this in three hours. So after three hours of just leaving it alone to stir, which is perhaps not the most exciting of things, it's time to turn it off and have a look. Now, it does seem to have done something in so much as the water's gone brown. Anyway, let's turn it off and get it filtered out. So, after filtering it, this is what you get. That's the acorn that's been done in the alcohol and water mix. And there is the ethanol and water, and you can see how brown that's got. So all of the tannin has gone into here. So, of course, it's the moment of truth. Time to give it a taste test. Hmm. It's kind of sweet. Got quite a lot of oil in there. Got a sort of an almost cashew nut taste, but it's a bit more fibrous. That's amazing! <laughs> <laughs> so, what about this stuff? Well, actually, we can reclaim that. If we put a bit of calcium hydroxide in there, then it will form an insoluble calcium tannate and it will precipitate out. So I've mixed in some calcium hydroxide. I'm going to pour it into this separating funnel so that you can see it a bit better, because we'll be able to see that separate out. Okay, so here is our water and ethanol mix. This is all calcium tannate. This is a bit of calcium hydroxide. Now, calcium tannate is actually a commercial product. Tanners want it, so you could sell that. Chances are, if you went down with a couple of kilos or two, they wouldn't be that interested. But in an industry way, this can be resold and is actually a commodity in itself. This can be reused, so we're not wasting anything. And we have this as our product. So remember, if you take limestone, which is calcium carbonate, roast it, you get calcium oxide, which is lime, stick that in water, you get slate lime, which is calcium hydroxide, and that's been used as a mortar for centuries. So it's really easy to do that separation part. Once you've done that, of course, what you get is this. And the big question is, what can you do with this? Well, it's actually ready to eat. This stuff is used as food in a great part of the world. Equally, it's not used as food in another huge part of the world. But now the tannins have remo been removed, we can brew it. Tannins kill brewer's yeast. If you stick this in some water in a dark place, body temperature, leave it with some brewer's yeast in there for a couple of weeks, you'll come back to a very strong beer. And of course, you distill that and you have your bioethanol. It's how bioethanol is currently made. But when they make bioethanol, they use what we consider to be food products. So, wheats and starches and grains, that kind of thing. Things we would normally eat. But of course, acorns are not something we normally eat. They're absolutely everywhere. They're in the millions of tons. And now, you've got a process that takes only three hours to change that to a food grade product that you could make bioethanol from really easily. Now, I tasted this and it does taste sweet and nutty, but then I did use methylated spirits, which is 90% uh, alcohol. If I were going to eat an awful lot of this, then I wouldn't use that. I might use something like vodka. 
vodka is 40% by volume alcohol. It would do just brilliantly. And we can recover the vodka and reuse it. And if we do use this with brewer's yeast and make our own bioethanol, we could just use that. <laughs> really stunningly easy, nice and circular. It was always kind of there, but the big holdback was getting the tannins out of the acorns can take weeks and it can use an awful lot of energy if you're doing hot leaching. This way, three hours, give it a stir at 30 to 60 degrees and you're away. So I thought I would share that with you because I think it is an open door to either using acorns as food or using acorns as biofuel and the fuel of the future. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe. It does make a difference.